The backtrack feature is very important to mechanical or hard form uh, sculpting. So we're going to take a look at plane, line, spline, and path. Plane essentially creates a uh, virtual 2D plane that is positioned on the model. This depends on uh, what kind of orientation setting you're using as well as your samples and, and things like that. Uh, line allows you to drag out a line and then backtrack along that line to uh, make an effect. So let's just stop there and, and, and understand that. Uh, we're going to go to our stroke. We're going to go from plane to line and lower my draw size. I'm going to click from the left side to the right side and then drag backwards. And as I drag backwards, it's going to attempt to cut a clean plane across there. Nice and clean. So this can be a good way to establish very uh, controlled and specific directions. The other backtrack features just give us more nuance to our control. So for example we can go to the spline option which we can actually explore much better by going into the brush palette and selecting the planar spline brush. And we can see from the planar spline that it has spline active, it has a specific alpha, and one other thing it's got different is that the, uh, it's ignoring position information when it's sampling it. And uh, that just helps stabilize it slightly. Uh, but the function of planar spline, or uh, really of the backtrack spline, is to take the um, area between two points, two points being where the yellow circles are, and allow you to carve backwards with a bit of a soft slope. Notice that that's not a really a straight line, that's a bit softer. So I can come in here and any of the lines that I end up drawing are just going to be a little bit uh, more gradient, a uh, little bit softer edged, uh, not so uh, strong. If I switch over to planar line, then everything I do from this point is going to have a hard edge. So planar spline is giving us a little bit more softness. We can control that softness by adjusting track curvature. So let's set this all the way up to 80, increase our draw size, click from one point to another, and draw back. Notice how that's a much softer curve. And that can also be taken advantage of when we are in models uh, where we've got a, let's say, a hard edge that we want to uh, blend between. So for example this hard edge right here we can click from one side to the other and ask for it to gradient that side. Let's smooth it out a bit in case the polygons are quite dense. And take our stroke spline, adjust that downwards. There we go. I had to make my draw size slight bit larger but now we are able to blend that in a little bit uh, softer. The path stroke will allow us to define a specific path. So let's go back to just the planar brush. We're going to select path. And so that we can actually see this, let's select an alpha. We will click at one point and draw out a path. Careful if you, if ZBrush senses you've gone back upon your path, it enacts the uh, sculpting side. So now see how we've drawn out a path and then the alpha has followed that back. So there are some uses to that in hard surface sculpting, uh, but there's other uses uh, as well. So we can go to, uh, let's say for example, the magnify brush where we have a hard alpha. I've enabled path. I'm going to turn snap to track on. 
lower my draw size and now I'll be able to say draw where I want this to put these rivets which are quite massive so I'm going to lower that down and it will nicely conform to exactly where I wanted those.